Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a gadgets tutorial. Today, we're going to be looking at the tag. Now, the tag is a special gadget in that it doesn't actually do anything by itself. It has no sort of active parts. Um, it is uh, used, however, by these five gadgets. That's the trigger zone, the laser scope, the follower, the lookout rotator, and the teleporter. They use the tag as a target. So this um, is looking for tags to enter its trigger zone. This is looking for tags to point at. This is looking for tags to follow, tags to look at, and tags to teleport to. And just to emphasize that it is a target, the emblem that they've used for the tag is actually a target with sort of a label inside it. Uh, labels are quite important for the tag. Um, unlike other gadgets where uh, you can name it or not name it, it doesn't really matter. Um, the tag needs to have a name, a proper name uh, that you've assigned it to so that it knows which thing to uh, point at. Uh, tags names do not have to be exclusive. You can have hundreds of tags with the same name. And tags are, are only active when they're powered on. So you can power on and off tags as you like. Right, so my first experiment, I'm going to show you uh, both the follower and the trigger zone together to make something pretty cool. So I've built something over here. Uh, the reason I'm not building this in the tutorial is because it would make the tutorial a little bit long. So I'm going to try and explain what I've done here uh, step by step so that you can recreate this um, and have a bit of fun. Right, I've placed a lot of tags in my world. What it is, I placed one, named it Path. Now, the naming part is it up here. Put it in there, type your name in. There you go, name of Path. And I uh, cloned it and placed it around in this loop, like so. Um, I then propped a selector down and I linked a wire from uh, each of the outputs on here to the power uh, inputs on all of our tags. So this is tag A, B, C, D, etc, etc. So each of these tags are only going to be powered on when these are selected by the selector. Then I linked uh, the tag outputs these are the, uh, the the output of the tag to a node. So they're all linked in to this node. Um, now you could have wired it directly into um, the selector, uh, but um, I think it's a good exercise to use nodes for this type of thing because um, you might want to use the outputs for more than one thing on all your gadgets. And if you use a node, then you're just using uh, the, all these wires once, and then there's a single wire out from the node to however many gadgets you need, rather than wiring everything in and having hundreds and hundreds of wires. So that's why I've used a node. So um, I've wired the outputs on all of these into this node. So I just wired, I took a wire from there into there. Um, then that node is going into move to next output. So what this is going to do um, is when this tag is um, activated, when it's active, it's going to send a signal to the node, which is going to send a signal to move to the next output, which is then going to power the next tag. So it's going to start off with this tag being active. Uh, start off with this tag being on and then this one, then this one, then this one. And it becomes active because my player has a trigger zone in its, in its microchip. And this trigger zone is also looking for path. So you see they're all flashing. That is the trigger zone it's looking for. So it's looking for the, the tag output path. And um, when it finds one of these tags, it's going to activate it. So that will activate this output, which will change the selector. I hope that's 
clear what that is doing let's turn it on maybe we can see so as as the player starts to follow he's following he's walking towards these tags once he reaches the tag and it's detected by his detector um, that is turning on the next tag and turning off the tag that he's standing next to so he moves on and this way you can create a pathway for a non-player character to walk on at the moment he's running um, I recommend you uh, uh, if you're doing a pathway with a non-player non character that you slow that right down uh, by changing the his movement speed um, but I've got it in a circle but it doesn't have to be a circle um, I can switch these around put my paths anywhere I like so it's walking towards that one right now because my zone is too low it's not activating the detector so you've got to watch for that and this one's too high there you go so there we go you can set up a path for a, uh, a non-player character to walk on um, you can set it up with animations and all sorts of things S say which direction you want um, your character to move in you'll just follow whatever paths are active isn't that cool so there we go and you can interrupt this you can set this up as a program um, so you can have a microchip that runs this uh, unless another circumstance so for example you could have a guard patrolling up and down in front of a gate um, unless you uh, walk in and start to attack him in which case he'll then go into attack mode and stop doing this path chasing instead there you go so that's experiment number one right for our next experiment then we're going to have a look at the laser scope so we have our laser scope uh, gadget here it is and it's gizmo um, when I select it like this you can see it has a gizmo and this is the direction and the length of the laser scope um, view this is what it's um, what it's using uh, to point in a direction and you can change whoops you can change the the orientation um, direction of uh, of this gizmo like so you can move that up and down like this um, but it's pretty fixed it's pretty fixed it will be one direction um, and then whatever it's connected to would have to move like this uh, in order for you to get um, your your direction however there is an option for it to point at a tag so now we're going to look for a tag uh, we're going to call it laser and I'm going to pop a tag in and we're going to call it laser like so now now this uh, is now always going to point at the laser the distance it's not going to point um, the direction only it's not the length the length is not set by the tag it is just the direction of the tag so I can pull the tag right out and out actually outside the zone uh, or right up inside so what's happening here is the laser is not actually moving it's it's a fixed position but uh, where it's pointing is attached to my tag so if you can imagine this on the end uh, of, a, of a gun sight and of a barrel or a cannon um, uh, what this is doing is uh, is as you move your gun and you'd have something set up that would create the movement of your gun barrel uh, our laser scope is now going to be pointing where your gun barrel is and it will know whether or not when you fire whether you're going to hit something so if let me just open up our laser 
and we'll go to our outputs page and you'll see it flash so as I move there we go I'm pointing at that brick it lights up not pointing at the brick am pointing not am not am so this is going to be a hit if you fire this is going to be a miss hit miss miss hit And if I was to place a brick, some bricks a bit further on, I, um, you'll notice that because the laser isn't long enough, um, although I'm aiming at that brick, it's not going to set it off. So make sure that you have your laser scope at the length that you need it to be uh, for how far away you can shoot stuff. Um, and this is the basis for a gun so you just stick your tag on the end of your gun barrel or the sight and there you go your laser scope is now aiming where you are aiming and you don't have to turn your player so you can have that attached to the player the player can move around and the gun can point in a completely different place to the player it's player's orientation which would be right for various games and uh, you can also have this fixed in position. So there we go. That's a use for um, the laser scope and the tag. Right. Uh, now we're going to have a look at our next one, which is the look at rotator. Well, I've set this up um, as if we have three different shops. Uh, these are our shopkeepers and here's our player and he's going to go up to the shopkeepers and have a conversation with them i haven't set any dialogue up but <clears throat> you imagine that there's some dialogue going on so for the first one i've got no um tag on him on the second one and the third one i've got a shop tag so i've just added a tag to just attached it to their chest and called it shop in my player i've got a detection zone a trigger zone um uh, that's centered to him and around him and that is going to look for a tag and that's going to look for shop there we go i've obviously got that one turn that off right shop it's going to look for shop and when it finds shop it's going to activate this look at rotator and this look at rotator is also looking for shop I've got that set to 100% uh, rotation strength and you'll need to alter let's turn that off you'll need to alter the direction of the rotation now I'm sure everybody at Media Marker when they did this thought this was hilariously funny but I mean my goodness look where they've put the rotator indicator it doesn't matter where you put the rotator on your player this is where it sticks the gizmo it gets worse because if you want to, you you know, it, I, I, I don't know what to say about this. I'm sure you're all laughing at uh, like drains at home. But I mean, my God, they might want to change that. Put it, put it in his chest or something. That, I mean, just like, why is it there? Anyway, uh, laughter aside, um, you make sure that the rotation of your player is directly in front of him so that when he rotates um, to look at anything, he's facing forwards you don't want it coming over to the side otherwise it's not going to work he won't look at anyone right so we've done that um i've got uh, my shopkeeper here he's just got an ordinary uh, locator and this one however i've also added uh, a look at rotator to his chip he's got a, a look at rotator and he's looking for the follow me tag which as we know is in all of the puppets Right then. I'm going to possess. I'm going up to my first shopkeeper. Hello, shopkeeper. I'm just going to wander. I'm going to stand behind you. We're having a conversation, but I don't want to look at you. This is a very strange conversation that you could have with a shopkeeper and start buying things and everything. He's talking to you, but you're, you're not looking at him. He's not looking at you. It's all a bit strange. This is our second shopkeeper immediately i've turned to face him if i try to walk around i'm continuing to face him and i start strafing so i'm walking sideways backwards and forwards with my legs 
This is very useful and can be useful for combat situations. So um, you can stick a look at rotator and a tag in your enemy and this is really good for combats. But it's also very good for shop. But in a shop situation it is better if the shopkeeper looks at you. This shopkeeper is turning to face me slowly. Um, you, I, I recommend you change the strength so that he turns much much quicker so let's do that strength on a lo uh, look at ro rotator will change the speed so let's just change his whoops let's change that to a to a hundred that should be better let's whoop I rewinded it I didn't mean to do that right okay let's go back over so as you come in he's always going to be facing you so that's a good indication that he is somebody to talk to so a quest giver it's a good idea to put a look at rotator in them so he's looking at your player your player is now in the zone he's looking at you you're looking at it there we go look at that there we are so they're having a conversation so it doesn't matter where your player moves to whoops there we go he should turn to face it's a little bit weird because he sort of turns in a sort of weird weird manner but there you go tags and look at rotators it's looking for a tag he's looking for follow me he's looking for shop there we go ideal perfect Right, so that I uh, think leaves us with one more tag, and that's the teleporter. Right, so here is our setup for uh, showing you uh, the use of a teleporter with a tag. Um, I've got three checkpoints here. Now, um, normally uh, you have to die before you go back to a checkpoint, um, and these will still work. Uh, these will still. Um, act as a checkpoint so if you die uh, you'll go back to the the next checkpoint but i've got something now um so that it's also going to activate a tag so we can use it as a fast travel point as well so um each checkpoint is linked to a tag also called checkpoint with the currently active straight into the power inside my player brain I'm going to call them brains. Why not? They are brains. Um, right. In in our player, we have a link to uh, the square button directly into the power of a teleporter. The teleporter is looking for a tag. It's looking for checkpoint. And as we know, um, you can have numerous tags with the same name and just power the one on that you want to be active at any one time. So these are going to be active when these checkpoints are active so let's have a look see what happens so I start off at the red flag if I wander into here and I press my square button I fast travel back to my red flag if I walk to the yellow flag and then move over here and press my square button I've teleported to the yellow flag same with the blue Now you'll notice there's a little dip. Activate the yellow one. Yellow. There we go. There's a little dip. And that's because uh, the tag itself has um, a gizmo on it. There we go. There's its gizmo. And it's asking the player to spawn here. Um, which is not ideal. So we really want it to put our checkpoint tag at mid height sort of a uh, hip height and that should solve our problem let's see oh it doesn't work at all now hang on okay I've got it too high is that what's happened what's happened red no he's still he's still dipping 
right and then a bit higher there we go let's try that there we go he jumps a little bit because I've got it tad high so you'd have to experiment and just yeah I think he's gonna do a little little jump but it's entirely up to you whether you want him to sort of bend his knees and I quite like the way he bends his knees and straightens up to be honest um, but for this red one he just sort of pops in like that entirely up to you hate it so there you go so the teleporter is just teleporting uh, to the active tag it's exactly the same as when we did the uh, follow me in the paths um, we've got an active path and we've changed which active path is actually turned on because they've all got the same name you could however have each of these checkpoints with a different name create yourself a, a list and um, have some counters on here you could create a whole fast travel system with a list so as soon as you've activated that checkpoint that that will activate um, your ability to fast travel it on a list and, uh, and then you can fast travel uh, in the way that you do for lots of adventure games um, I might actually do a tutorial just to explain that entire uh, thing a bit later on as a game mechanic uh, but the basis of it is here in this little experiment right well that's all of the um, uh, gadgets uh, looked at there's, but there's one other thing that the tag does um, that um, at the moment I haven't worked out a game mechanic for uh, but it is incredibly interesting here is the tag right the tag has this extra button so we have the tag output which we've used a few times um, but there's also something called scene space transform so now if I link this to a splitter and pop another splitter down so I'm linking that to the splitter and I'm linking the translation to another splitter you can see I have three ABCs three number values now this is a fat wire if you're not familiar with fat wires a fat wire is something that sends more than just one signal it's got more more information in it so if you see a wire that looks like this all nice and stripy or different colors then you know that the information it is sending is not just a signal or a pulse it's actually a lot more information and if you stick it in a splitter uh, then you can see what that information is um, this scene transform uh, offers us translation which is position rotation which is the angle it's facing and scale which is the size of it and um, we can see those numbers let's pop some number displayers in one for each of those numbers and I think you can tell already what these numbers are going to be these are going to be the X Y and Z coordinates of the tag um, so there's our number displayer number one this is number two and this is number three and we're going to as we've got more selected we're going to give it three decimal spaces so you can see the whole number Right, and as we move our tag you can see it's moving around and all those numbers are changing this is a coordinate of where your tag is now you can use this coordinate to, to uh, for very precise measurements of things um, between you can use a calculator to calculate distance between two tags so um, you can work out distances with this um, you can also work out um, using trigonometry and lots of mathematics um, the relationship between one tag and another tag and all of this is very useful for various things so if I um, put precise move on you'll be able to see that um, the middle one that second B is the Y coordinate A is the X 
And if I pull it backwards and forwards, there we go. That's the Z. Whoops, that's the Z. I can't. Whoop. There we go. It's very difficult to move it without moving everything else. Right, there we go. So it's X, Y, Z, which is what you'd expect. But just to confirm it, there we go. There is your tag. I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, join me next time for our next uh, gadget. Uh, in the meantime, I will catch you in your dreams.